He's a fox, okay? A fox. That's right. Anyway, uh, let's just take a look at his stats here real quick. Uh, being a combined monster, he starts with Reliance 40. Has pretty decent intelligence to start off with, nothing else too impressive. Uh, he starts off with Glutton, along with 4C. And of course, up fire, because, like many foxes, uh, he can use fire. And he also starts with 4 attacks, being a combined monster. Beacon Talons, neither particularly damaging, but pretty accurate. Fire Blast, and Flame Shot, being two more intelligence-based attacks. Which, not so accurate, but a little bit more damaging. And a little bit more costly on guts, both of these are pretty cheap. And overall, uh... Should be getting two more power attacks, and four more intelligence-based attacks. None of the power attacks are all that strong, honestly. But we'll be getting into that a bit later. Okay, now with our 40 Reliance, um, we could just go straight into Heavy Drills, but the stat gains from them aren't that high, honestly, to begin with. Um, his road work animation is pretty amusing, though. And you'll note that I now have uh, my Mochi Dengo doing the uh, training for defense and life and etc. now. As Aegis has once again left me, so now it is up to Dengo to show people how to get hit. And he's really good at it too, he's actually proficient in all of these drills that I set him to. But anyway, uh, we'll just skip ahead a little bit here. Alright, here we are. After nearly a year, we have moved up to D rank, and our stats look like this. And we are ready to uh, go on up to the C rank. Should provide a good opportunity to go into a little bit more about the Phoenix in combat, and it's um, early uh, fighting strategies. The first thing to note about the battle capabilities of the Phoenix here is that its guts regenerate is pretty low. Also, as previously noted, its physical attacks aren't all that hot. Its intelligence-based attacks at this point honestly aren't all that much better, but they do at least have the advantage of being fire-aligned, so they do have up fire helping them out a little bit. And they also have a existent guts down and crit rating, which normally wouldn't be worth pointing out, except that Talons and Beak both have pretty much non-existent guts down and crit. And that's really all there is at this point. There's not too much to go over when you've only got four attacks, and they're all pretty lousy. So we'll skip the rest of this tournament. And go over a little bit more about training. At this point I've switched over entirely to heavy drills, uh, primarily focusing on accuracy and intelligence but also with uh, defense and life as side stats. And I'm also making rather frequent use of mint candies, as it also reduces um, fatigue in addition to reducing the stress as stated. Um, not every week, but, you know, a pretty good amount of them. So, yeah, that's pretty much it here, so skip ahead to the fruits of our labors. We'll wrap up this little phoenix exhibition here with a look a bit later on. Our Firefox is now just past three years old. Our stats look something like this. Our moveset looks something like this. And 
my mint candies supply looks something like this. And we are now ready to enter into the official S. And we'll start our new move demonstration with the two remaining power attacks. First up we have Rapid Beaks, which is about as accurate as Talons and about as damaging as Beak for about the guts cost of the two combined. So nothing particularly special there. Next up we have Fire Cannon, which has roughly equal accuracy and damage to Beak, but it does also have fairly potent guts down. It's still not particularly useful due to the Phoenix not having particularly great uh, guts regen of its own. Moving on, we now have Firestorm, which I would consider to be Fox's best attack. it is very accurate, or it's fairly accurate. It has pretty fair damage rating, and it also has a decent crit chance. On top of that, it only costs 26 guts. So overall, it is a very strong attack. Next up, we have Fire Stream, which has pretty good accuracy and decent damage. So it's an alright attack on its own but in comparison to Firestorm, it falls a little short. As it is only a little bit more accurate than Firestorm, and about the same damage, but costs significantly more guts. Next we have Heat Beam. Which is fairly inaccurate, but pretty damn damaging. I still prefer Firestorm to Heat Beams, though, as they are more reliable and still pretty damaging. Next up, we have one more attack that we didn't quite have the room to set before. As so we had three new far attacks, but only two slots. So we'll use that one now. Fire Wave here is very costly at 50 guts, and fairly inaccurate, but it does have a decent crit chance. And it is also the most powerful attack in the game. Between Firestorm and uh, Heat Wave, Phoenix has some very nice intelligence-based attacks. Unfortunately, none of its power attacks are particularly worthwhile, but that just makes it easier to ignore power. I'd still say Firestorm is its uh, most useful attack, since it's just so cheap for being an all-around solid attack. So that pretty much wraps up um, Phoenix here. I'll go ahead and show off the other two Phoenixes as well, as there is only two other types. First up we have the Black Flame Cinderbird which this one does not require any further um, steps to obtain. You just have to put in the password, and there you go. So when you have Phoenix unlocked, you can get this one just as easily. The other one, however, requires a little bit extra. 
as you first have to raise a phoenix to S rank, and then fight the special monster as a random battle, much like a Boro from a previous episode. Beating it will give you the password, as well as permission to use the second special phoenix, Blaze. That's it for Phoenix, however there is still one more monster breed left to unlock, which will be next time in a very short final episode. See ya!